Hi, my name is Kristen and this is Kristen Craves Books. So as you can tell, we're back to filming in front of my bookshelves and it feels so good. I feel like I was away from them for far too long and it's just nice to sit here and film in front of them, so that's great. And today I am doing a collab video, no surprise, the coordinator of this collab is Becky from Bex Reads. There's quite a few people doing this, so I will leave a link to a playlist or to everybody's videos down below as they come out. And it's funny to be in the group chat talking about putting this video together with everybody because obviously everybody's definition of the word dark is very different. It's a very broad term. I think you can go to different genres. I think a lot of people will probably do dark romance, but I'm just not a dark romance reader, so I won't have any of those for you today. You're gonna see a lot more horror and fantasy on my list, but if you're looking for dark romance, I'll leave everybody down below. I'm sure we're gonna get a ton of those. But I'd be curious to know what you consider a dark book. What makes a dark book for you because I think we're all different and what we can tolerate and what we can handle will vary and will be different. So for me, a dark book is anything that tackles difficult topics and when you put it down, it leaves you with a heavy feeling. You just know when you're in that book that you don't come out of it feeling good. And you can feel the tension. I think a lot of it for me comes down to atmosphere. So I have eight books to share with you today, four that I actually own. And I do love a dark book, even though I feel like I'm more known for reading cozy and lighter reads, I can get into a dark book, especially this time of year. If I'm gonna read something that feels perfect for October in the fall time or around Halloween, I'm gonna lean more to horror and things that are heavier than say a thriller or a mystery. So that's what I have for you today. And we'll start with an obvious one, Bluefoot by Brom. Actually, I just read Brom's new one, Evil in Me. I haven't talked about it yet because I'm just going to do a fall wrap up I think when the time comes and I read it in September but that's also dark in a very different way than this one is. I can't wait to talk about that one because I have a lot of thoughts. Mostly good. I can't wait to see the artwork but this one is historical fiction. It is centered around witch trials and I feel like any book that takes that on is going to inherently be dark especially when you're getting to themes of Puritan versus paganism and that's really what we get here and I've come across a lot of people who don't typically like to read about the witch trials because it is so heavy who have absolutely loved this. It is grotesque and gruesome but in the best way possible because ultimately it's about revenge and you're cheering the main character on and it's just so satisfying and I loved it and I think I can just show you an illustration or two to get an idea of the darkness that you're gonna get in this and I am here for it. In my head this is the perfect October book and if you haven't read it yet please try and track down a copy because it's dark but in a way you know how I said it leaves you with a heavy feeling this does in some ways because there's certain moments I can picture now that are so visual and it kind of messes with you in a bit but you also come out of it feeling very very satisfied which is such a good feeling when you're reading a book like this one because it's not typically how you feel about witch trials and I just thought it was fantastic, loved it so much. A go-to author for me who definitely takes on heavier themes and I would consider her books dark is CJ Cook. This is an arc. Actually, I need to get a finished copy of this. I don't know why I haven't yet. This is The Ghost Woods and all of her books are dark. The Haunting in the Arctic that came out last year, what was the one before this one? Uh, the Lighthouse of Witches recommend them all but I feel like in terms of atmosphere and tension this might be the darkest just because it is set in a haunted mansion where unmarried women are sent to in order to give birth and then give their babies up for adoption so it's historical two timelines which is what CJ Cook tends to do though in this case the timelines are very close together just a few years apart and you're seeing how both of these women their stories interconnect so you're getting some kind of paranormal feelings about it. I won't tell you if that is real or not. There's also obviously a ghost wood. So you have this darkness surrounding this mansion while some really horrific stuff are happening within the walls as well. And I just think that CJ Cook has this really powerful way of creating atmosphere and tension and making you care about the characters and taking on some heavier themes. Because you know if you're talking about a place for unwed mothers, you're going to get into some topics of abuse and that definitely happens in here in her last one a haunting in the arctic you're on a ship where a woman is on board and you see how she is horribly mistreated on that as well so she does take on heavier themes i definitely would call her 
looks dark, maybe not in the traditional way, but they feel that way to me. I'd be surprised if we don't see this book on a few lists today, but it's hard not to mention it and hit the Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I won't get into it too much. Dracula, vampires, unless you're going campy, it's probably going to be dark, and this one is not campy at all. You're following one of Dracula's brides, and you see her writing letters to him without ever actually mentioning his name, which is powerful in and of itself, but you see as the letters go on how she's unraveling and coming to terms with the abuse that she faced from Dracula. She thinks at the beginning that she's deeply in love with him, and then that slowly unravels as you go through, and it's beautifully written, and obviously that lends itself to some dark conversations and some dark themes and it's just done so well. One I definitely have to reread, I need to listen to the audiobook. I've heard the audiobook is fantastic but I just really love this and obviously S.T. Gibson is an author that I very much enjoy but yeah this is definitely dark and one of my favorite vampire books. The last one I own is one that I just read and I gave it three stars but I keep thinking about it and it's messing with my head so I think that is a sign of a dark book and it's Mother Thing and this is by Ansley Hogarth and I love this cover and this is getting into some darker themes surrounding relationships with your mother or your mother-in-law and in this story the mother-in-law dies and is haunting the couple in the basement but a lot of the darkness comes from being in the main character's head it is hard to be in her head she is a frustrating bizarre character but you're so fascinated by her that you keep returning to it. I couldn't read it in one sitting that's how much it was messing with me which is successful. I think that's what the author wanted. Not one that I would recommend sitting down in an afternoon and taking in at once or reading at night before you go to bed. I think just like 20 pages here or there is the way to go unless you want to have all these thoughts swirling around in your head. It was something and I think if you have a complicated relationship with your mother-in-law specifically You'll either love or hate this, I can't tell you. It is just a book that continues to mess with me about a month after I have read it. So that is a good sign. It's a sign that it is dark and it's a sign that it's successful at what it set out to do. Be curious to read more from this author actually. Then the ones that I don't own, I had to put a T. Kingfisher on here. Though I don't think she writes the darkest books ever, she does write horror. Like What Moves the Dead is one of the first books from her that I read. It's a horror book. It is a Fall of the House of Usher by Poe retelling and that's a bonus recommendation but her newest book A Sorceress Comes to Call is a dark fairy tale retelling and I do think if you're trying to discover if you like dark books maybe try a dark fairy tale retelling. Something that you're already familiar with because I think a lot of fairy tales, we know this, are dark in nature. Like if you read the Grimm's fairy tales they are dark and disturbing so it makes sense that these retellings would be. And T. King Fisher historically has written more whimsical fairy tale retellings that touched on darkness a little bit but this one goes fully in and I think her last one was doing that as well. She seems to be leaning more into this darkness which I can appreciate. She's a fantastic. I think that she's great at creating darkness in relationships. It's the characters relationships and the way they interact and it just leaves you with this heavy feeling and in this case it's the relationship between a mother and daughter this is a goose girl retelling which is not a fairy tale i'm very familiar with but we're following cordelia who is living a really isolated life with her mother her mother's got her on a short leash she's not allowed to be in rooms with closed doors and things like that and one night they flee from their town in the middle of the night and she doesn't understand why. They end up at this mansion of this wealthy man and his sister Hester is living there as well and Cordelia's mother is trying to marry this man so that they ha are set for life but Hester knows that there's something not quite right with Cordelia's mother and it all plays out from there. So it's a very simple plot. It all takes place in this house and it's more about the characters. There is like a bit of what do you call it a mystery? There's sort of a mystery. There is some drama that happens, some dark things that happen and that moves the plot forward. But it's really watching Cordelia battle with her mother. It's like they make these kind of references in the book I believe where it's like an abused animal almost. That is how Cordelia is where she is just so scared. She doesn't know how to act. She doesn't have her own independence and Hester's recognizing this and kind of trying to save her while also saving her brother. So there's some hope as the book goes on which is also good in darker books. Sometimes it doesn't all have to be heavy. You need to have some light in the darkness but it's definitely tense and the payoff is great. And it's T. Kingfisher so you know it's well written as well. Can't wait to see what she does next. Actually her next book was just announced. I'm sure I'll talk about that in a future video soon. I haven't really looked 
too much of the synopsis. I just saw Duty King Fisher want to read, so I'll have to look into it more, but she's a fantastic. I think this is one of her best, actually. I love horror, but I don't have a ton of autobi horror authors like I would for fantasy or romance. I have a ton of autobi authors in those genres, but horror, not as much. But somebody who has the potential to become an autobi author, I don't think he has enough books out yet, that, so I could say that, is Nat Cassidy. And I loved both of his books, Mary and The Nestling, but Mary is my favorite. That is his debut, I believe, which is incredible. You always have to read his author's notes. You gotta understand why he writes the books that he does. Mary is following a menopausal woman. So he talks about why he chose to write Mary's story and it's very interesting. But right out the gate, that book starts creepy and dark and there's a scene in the very first chapter that haunts me to this day and I'm somebody who yeah I remember certain scenes years out but not to this extent like I remember so much of what happens in Mary because it's so visceral and dark because it's so graphic and visual that I just think it's a success and you're just following Mary as she's leaving New York and going back to her hometown because her aunt who raised her needs her help but her aunt is absolutely awful and Mary's kind of circling the drain, we will say, and I'll just leave it at that, and I have to reread it. It is so good. Just sitting here talking about it and thinking of all the scenes in my mind makes me want to reread it, so don't be surprised if that happens. Though, Nat Cassidy does have a new book coming out in October, Rest Stop. That's a novella, so maybe I'll just read that. I just think he's brilliant, and Nestling is also very dark, so there's another bonus recommendation. It's a author recommendation, Nat Cassidy, read his stuff. This next one is both dark in themes and dark visually because it is from below and it is set in the bottom of the ocean and I have discovered that I love underwater horror. It's just hard to find. This is my favorite book from Darcy Coates, though I haven't read a lot. She's written so many books and last year I read a few and I haven't really thought about reading more from her this year, but it is October. Maybe I should do that. She's got a ton and I think a few of them used to be on KU. I'm not sure if they are anymore, but I think the audiobooks might be on Everand. I'm just gonna keep this one simple because I think it's best to go into it knowing next to nothing. You're following a dive team who is exploring the SS Arcadia, which is a ship that wrecked many years before. And let's just say that not all is as it seems and we'll leave it at that. I felt like I had to put a Southern horror on this list because I've talked about this recently that that is like a subgenre of horror that tends to work for me and I think it can get very dark because there's a lot of social commentary. It just feels very human and like some of the stuff could happen. I went with When the Reckoning Comes by Latanya McQueen and there's some stuff that are obviously it's not all realistic what happens in this but the setup of it is, and I think some of the darkness in this one comes from just how horrible humans can be. And I like the little blurb of this. It says, a haunting novel about a black woman who returns to her hometown for a plantation wedding and the horror that ensues as she reconnects with the blood-soaked history of the land and the best friends she left behind. So yeah, this wedding just does not go as planned. I have to say this though, the ending is not as satisfying as I wanted it to be. It's some one complaint I have about this book and it's still, bothers me to this day. I think I read this a couple of years ago, but the rest of it is worth it. It is really dark as you're following this main character who doesn't really recognize what's going on and you really want her to fight for herself and to stand up for herself and things start to happen around her at this wedding. And it's great. Has this author written anything new? I feel like I've been waiting for ages. Um, no doesn't look like it. So for now, we'll just have to settle for when the reckoning comes, but it is brilliant and I continue to think about it. It continues to frustrate me, but it's definitely on the darker side. I think a lot of the dark books that I read are more historical, so it's nice to have some of these more contemporary ones as well. So that is my list. I cannot wait to see what everybody else comes up with because I need some more recommendations. I thought I had a ton. I was going through all the books I read on Goodreads and I'm like, okay, this is horror or this is like a thriller, but I don't think it's dark enough. So I need some recommendations. I know some other people who are participating struggled with that as well, but I think it's fun to see what everybody comes up with. So let me know what you would recommend, what you consider a dark book, because it's such a broad term and I'll talk to you all soon. I have a lot of exciting videos coming out because it is October after all, the best time of year for booktube content. So I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for your support. Bye for now.